reddened, where part of the body becomes reddened, swollen, hot, and often painful. So in that description, that is when we come down with an infection and you can feel it gets hot or it hurts or um, it, you know, swelling. Sometimes inflammation temporarily is a good thing. And the reason for that is that if you sprain your ankle and it swells and gets hot, it's actually a good thing because it's like an internal cast on, your, on that part of your body to try to protect the, the ligaments, the muscles, the bone, et cetera. But if it lasts or it starts moving throughout the body, then it becomes very detrimental to our health. And we can get inflammation all through our body. Uh, we're going to cover this, but I want to kind of give you an idea. The causes of inflammation, other than an injury, uh, I want you to think of this as bad eating, lack of exercise, and too much stress. So I know nobody on today eats bad, doesn't exercise, and carries stress. So I hope that you get something out of it being that we're all perfect, okay? But I want you to think about inflammation. For, for those of us who are believers, think of inflammation as the devil in our body, okay? It's always trying to take us down the wrong path, to break down the body. And because of that, it takes over everything in the body, the mind, the, the actually sometimes the will to keep going. And they kind of came up with a new, um, with a new term, inflammaging, okay? And inflammaging is because as we get older, inflammation is more prevalent in our body. Uh, because of the immune system and inflammation is a direct response uh, to the immune system. And when our immune system starts to break down because of any of those things I mentioned, then we start to develop inflammation. And again, inflammaging means as we age, it just progressively gets worse. And think about this. Most people as they age, what do they have a tendency to do? less exercise normally for sure, and um, maybe not always bad eating, but, but <laughs> more stress, okay? So if somebody is not on mute, so if we can mute, we won't get that feedback. I don't know if you're hearing that or not. Appreciate it. Hi, Claire, I see you just signed on. Welcome. Um, so it refers to, um, Inflammaging refers to an unregulated inflammatory response and a low-grade inflammation throughout the body that develops with age, and it can accelerate the aging process. And then, of course, it will worsen any age-related symptoms and or diseases. So when you see people as they age, all of a sudden they start to, they start to break down in the body. That's because they're getting a um, a rush of inflammation throughout the body. Okay, so as we, and we talked earlier about the need for detoxing, okay? And, and I can't stress that enough because detoxing flushes out the body, strengthens the immune system and eliminates inflammation, okay? Now one detox is not gonna get rid of all inflammation depending on where your body's at, but we, we do know that sometimes, for me, I detox every about every six weeks. During COVID, it was every month. Um, but we have to constantly, and of course, I'm old, so you know, the more older I get, the more I need to do it. Um, so I, I understand that. So the role of inflammation is starts the moment we are born. The moment we're born, inflammation starts to get into the body. Now, just like we have to have unfriendly bacteria in our body, we, we, we're always gonna have inflammation in our body. It's just the way it is. You're not gonna live and have a body 
without inflammation. I don't care what you do, okay? So what we do is we have to understand that there's nothing we're going to do about some inflammation. And nobody is going to be perfect and have zero. Just like nobody is going to have a perfect immune system. So um, I already mentioned what the term is, um, but it's unregulated inflammatory response and low-grade inflammation throughout the body that develops with age. And then, of course, it can increase a breakdown of our body. <clears throat> okay. So what are the signs and symptoms of inflammaging? And they're varied, okay? Um, common, and, and some of these are, uh, and I'm, I'm gonna take a step back though. <clears throat> anybody who has arthritis, anybody that has um, um, fibromyalgia, uh, candida, um, cancer, they have lots of inflammation. That's because it's a breakdown of the immune system and all of those issues is a breakdown of the immune system. And that's why I called inflammation the devil. Because what happens is we have a tendency to keep feeding it, just like we feed other things in our body. It just keeps getting worse. Um, you know, what causes it? Um, we're, well, I'll skip that. I'll get into it a little bit later. But <laughs> um, good to have Patty here to remind me. We're going to cover that. Okay. Um, so common signs and symptoms of inflammation include bone loss. So when people say, um, I had a test and I have bone loss. That is a cause of inflammation. Now, granted, when we start, most of the time we get bone loss, we're older. Uh, muscle loss, weakness and loss of strength. More oftentimes people say, you know, I, I'm, I don't have the strength I used to have. Well, the muscles get, because of age and inflammation, they get weaker. You can't build them as strong as you did when you were 20, 30, 40 years old. Weight gain, but more importantly, fat gain, where the fat just will not come down. Memory problems, mood swings, brain fog, muscle and joint pain, but overall body aches, uh, chronic pain. When you have chronic pain throughout the body, it is a um, inflammation problem. And normally what happens is, what do we do? We put people on a uh, medication to um, block the pain, but it's not getting rid of the pain, it's masking the symptom and the medication keeps on feeding the inflammation. So it gets worse and worse and then we need stronger medication to keep the pain uh, from being so severe. Digestive issues. Uh, again, what do a lot of people take that don't know better? They'll take um, some of the uh, Tums. They'll take uh, the Maaloxes of the world. They'll Nexium. take uh, Nexium. Nexium. All those actually fall into the category of increasing inflammation. Uh, blood sugar, diabetes is a um, cause of inflammation. Why? Liver, kidneys, uh, colon. Uh, frequent illnesses, frequent injuries, fatigue, low energy, sleep trouble, looking or feeling older than you are. Now, most of us don't necessarily look at ourselves and think we look older, but we know in our heart, in our mind, if we're feeling older than what we should feel. But those are all symptoms of increased amount of inflammation in your body. So how does it affect it? Okay. And the thing is, it affects every part of your body, the brain. So when people say, I have brain fog, uh, I can't remember, I have onset of Alzheimer's, or I have onset of um, MS, that oftentimes is inflammation. Uh, cardiovascular. So we get inflammation in the heart and uh, arterial uh, and the walls that contributes to heart disease, strokes, high blood uh, sugar, which again, diabetes, and anemia. So again, anemia creates fatigue. And fatigue is treated 
through uh, a lot of times they'll give you things like, um, oh, what am I trying to say? Um, makes it cost me. Um, iron? Iron. <laughs> iron tablets, huge amount of iron tablets. The problem with that is that normally that constipates people. And therefore, because of that, that creates more inflammation in the, in the intestinal tract. So if you look over the GI tract, and that creates even more problems. So what happens is medicine treats the symptom and not the root cause. Uh, it affects the muscles. And uh, so it causes muscle pain and weakness. Uh, so a lot of times when people end up with a uh, carpal tunnel, people say, well, carpal tunnel is unavoidable because I, I type all the time. That is not right. That is not true. All right. Um, it's because we become weak in a certain area and we got the inflammation because we probably had a stress in there. And then we didn't have enough energy to clear that out. Just like if you sprain your ankle and it goes on forever, pretty soon there's more inflammation. So then it creates another problem with the tendons. The, um, and that can turn into uh, rheumatoid arthritis and different things like that. Bones, uh, inflammation interferes with the body's natural ability to, to repair bone mass, all right? We have to understand that our bones are constantly being repaired as we live our life. It's not the same bone, obviously, that you were born with. Everything changes, everything moves. That's just the way our body was made. Skin, what happens is we start breaking out with rashes, eczema, acne, psoriasis, all those kind of things, because skin is the largest limitative organ and inflammation will actually come out through the skin. Uh, thyroid, uh, autoimmunity uh, is caused by inflammation. And what happens is the thyroid receptor counts disrupts the thyroid, which then disrupts hormones. So it affects um, our uh, libido. It affects all kinds of things within the body. And then that creates an energy problem because a thyroid is a king gland in your body, which governs the parathyroid, which then governs and feeds into the adrenals, which gives us energy. So people get older and they say, middle of the afternoon, I'm so tired, I have to take a nap. That's because you have a thyroid function uh, disorder in all probability. It's not because you're 65, 70 years old. Uh, the lungs, um, it gets into the linings of the lung airways and then people come down with a lot of allergies, asthma, uh, bronchitis uh, regularly, all those kind of things because we have uh, inflammation in the lungs. The GI tract, like I mentioned, when people get constipated and then all of a sudden they end up with GERD, they end up with uh, acid reflux. Um, and again, they take things to suppress it, which creates more problems. Kidneys, um, the restrict blood flow to the kidneys. It complicates uh, like edema, hypertension, um, and kidney failure can ultimately result by too much inflammation and then the liver. And then the liver, we end up with a fatty liver uh, and different issues. So then people end up on, um, on having their blood pumped out. They have to uh, uh, dialysis and all kinds of stuff in order to keep the body functioning, which becomes really problematic to live a decent life. So that's how inflammation can affect the entire body. Um, but the, the, the top root causes of inflammation is what we eat, okay? Gluten, because gluten is not the gluten in the past. When we eat too much breads, and some of you get sick and tired of hearing us talk about, um, uh, you know, don't eat the breads, don't eat the carbs, etc., because it creates inflammation. Uh, most of our breads today are GMO, meaning they're not real. So we start eating those kind of things, and anything that's not real that we put in our body becomes uh, inflammatory. Sugars, and I'm, I'm going to do the sugar and the artificial sweeteners at the same time. 
So the sugar um, feeds inflammation and inflammation loves sugar and we become addicted to it. Now, sometimes we get too much inflammation, we can move into a candida state, all right? Artificial sweeteners are worse than sugar. I had a lady walk in just today and uh, Patty was wrapping somebody and I was in the back and she opened the door, stepped in and she went to leave. And I said, can I help you? She said, I was looking for the health food store, the alternative health. I said, well, you're in the right place. What can I do for you? Oh, she says, I'm looking to buy a sugar substitute. I said, all right. I said, um, um, we have um, a chicory root. And she goes, well, I really want Splenda or... Um, um, oh my God, well, I can't remember. Yeah, the other one, I, the, the little pink package. Anyways, and I said, no, no, we don't carry that because that's a chemical. She goes, well, it's cheap. She said, I want the cheap one. And I said, but the problem is it can destroy your health and end up killing you. And she said, looked at ours, asked me how much it was. I told her, oh, no, no. She said, I can get Splenda for a quarter of that cost. And yes, you can. But when we do it that way, we are destroying our immunity. And when we destroy our immunity, we just, we increase the inflammation. Refine carbohydrates, okay? When we, we go and we buy the cookies and, and the packaged stuff, uh, conventionally raised meat and dairy. Uh, what I mean by that is the meats that we get um, from, that are injected with steroids, okay? Is it more expensive to get farm raised, it is. Uh, or, grass fed, you mean? Or grass fed, I'm sorry. Grass fed, yes. Uh, it is. Okay, you have to look more for it. You have to shop for it, but it can save our lives. That's the whole basis. Farm raised fish and seafood. If you see farm raised and you buy farm raised, even though it's a lot cheaper, it's, it's destroying our health. Now, it looks the same, it'll taste the same, et cetera. But it's got, they use chemicals. And we have to understand that the, it's the chemicals that cause the inflammation. Processed conventional meats. Easy to go to the deli and say, give me um, you know, a pound of this or a half a pound of that, et cetera. But for those of you who have been on a program, for those of you who have been away from those kind of things and you go to a deli and you get sliced turkey, let's say, and you eat it, the next morning your mouth will be dry, you will feel, you might even have a headache, etc. That's because of the chemicals and the toxins in your body. Now, if you eat them regularly, then you're not going to notice it because your body's used to it. So if you eat that regularly and then you don't eat it for a while, you're going to feel a difference as well. But we get used to it and we think it's no big deal because it's just one meal. It's just this or it's that. Trans fat, okay? Partially hydrogenated oils. Cheaper? Yes. Healthy? Absolutely not. Creates all kinds of cardiovascular issues, which again, going back to what we talked about, um, in the cardiovascular system. It leads to strokes and heart attacks, uh, different things like that. Uh, food additives kind of falls in the same line. Highly processed vegetable and seed oils, stopping by fast foods, regardless of um, McDonald's or Wendy's or, or Burger King, whatever. They are all toxic. They have the, the processed oils the additives, the trans fat, they have all of that stuff built in. So when people tell me, I only go to the fast food and get salads. Sorry, those salads are not real. They spray them with a chemical so they stay green, look fresh. So we have to understand what causes the inflammation in our body and why are we feeling the way we're feeling and the things that are happening, why? I had a gentleman in today who was on a program and he admitted and he's actually a dentist and he said you know I just really didn't follow it and I asked him why I don't know because my daughter of course you know we have a tendency to blame people my daughter works at a pastry shop and every night she brings pastries home stuff that they were going to throw away and then after dinner I I eat them and 
I asked them, how badly, how badly does this weight that you're carrying affect you or bother you? He says, a lot. And I said, but the problem is until you decide you're going to change your lifestyle, then you're always going to carry the body fat. Once we decide it's not worth carrying the weight, it's not worth hurting, it's not worth all these things we talked about, then we will change, period. We'll say, no, that is not going in my body, okay? Because if you think about it, for those of you who have a family, you have spouses, you see them doing, children doing something that you don't want them to do, you take it away from them. You say, no, you're not going to do that. And you do it because you love them, not because you want to be mean, not because you don't want them to have fun. And we have to start understanding that we have to treat ourselves the same way. We can't go through life saying, I'll, I'll, I'll begin tomorrow. You know, I'm going to eat this bag of donuts or a donut, two donuts, and then I'll start. It won't work that way. You have to have that donut in front of you or that those um, French fries or whatever it might be. And you have to say, these are being thrown away. I'm not touching them tonight, today. I'm throwing it away. And therefore, from that point on, I'm not doing it, period. That's the only way we change our brain. If we take it too slow and we say, I'll just start later. Later is always later, always. So what are the signs? of insulin resistance, and this is the blood sugar portion. We tend to be overweight. We can't lose weight. We have a large appetite, especially for the things that we should not eat. Uh, we crave sweets after meals. And this gentleman I was mentioning, he was a diabetic. We got his diabetes under control, but I can guarantee you within the next six months, he'll be back on at least metformin, I guarantee. Uh, feeling more tired after meals. He told me, I said, what how do you feel after you eat the pastries? He said, oh, I just lay down and go to sleep, okay? Because you're tired after the meals. Frequent thirst and urge to urinate. Hormone problems. So when people come in and say they have polycystic ovary syndrome, most of that is caused by insulin resistance. Uh, estrogen to testosterone dominance. The males with low testosterone acne, skin issues, high blood pressure, high triglycerides. How do you know that? People get upset easy. They're anxious all the time, all those kind of things. Those are all the signs of insulin resistance, which is caused by uh, inflammation. Okay? So a healthy gut versus a, um, the leaky gut. Now, what do we mean by leaky gut? And leaky gut means that our intestinal tract walls are thin and, and some of the waste actually leaks into our body, which can become obviously very, very toxic. So what we, what we have to understand is that the leaky gut syndrome um, basically refers to gut permeability. Um, so it damages the lining of the gut creating holes that allow bacteria, toxins, and undigested particles to pass into our bloodstream, which creates what? Inflammation, okay? Uh, then it creates gut health issues and other chronic health issues. So for those of you who are a little bit older than, than some, there was a gentleman, um, uh, I believe his name was Barry Gibbs, and he was part of um, the group, um, the Bee Gees, yeah. And, but the reason I know this is because he had stomach problems. And one time, he had tremendous pain. They put him in the hospital. And before they could do anything, his intestinal tract burst. He lasted about three minutes. That's what happens when our gut health and the permeability of our intestinal tract breaks down. Okay? People say, oh, you know, I'll take Tums or I'll... Uh, I can control it. I No, you can't. At sooner or later, if you're not careful, if you don't do the right things, it will become so compromised that you can't make it, okay? And I'm not, I don't try to scare people. All I try to tell you is you have to understand that you cannot treat your intestinal tract the, with the garbage that goes through that we put in our body um, and think 
but your body is just going to continue to take it and not have a reaction. All right. Um, so chronic stress and poor sleep. Now, when we have stress, we get poor sleep. I think everybody would, would uh, recognize or understands that. So what we have is, what are the symptoms of stress? And like I said earlier, um, people don't, nobody that we have is under stress. I know that. But if you know somebody who grinds their teeth, okay, that is a sign of stress. Sometimes people don't even understand it. Uh, trouble concentrating, anger issues, anxiety, heart race, headaches, muscle tension, stomach problems, skin irritations, decreased sex drive, and fatigue. Those are all the symptoms of stress. So what happens is um, we become, the brain is, a, is affected because we have mood issues, uh, people are angry all the time. They're either depressed and then up and down in their moods. Uh, and I think we all know some of those people. Uh, concentration problems, sleeping issues, headaches, um, mm -hmm. mental issues, memory, all those kinds of things, panic attacks. Those are all uh, symptoms of stress. Now, sometimes if you go through a stressful period, you'll have some of those, uh, but they're not going to last for a long time. If somebody's in a hospital, somebody passes, something like that, um, then you'll get them for short term, but a healthy body will overcome it and take care of itself. Okay? It affects the heart, increased blood pressure, heart rate, higher cholesterol, and risk of heart attacks because a lining, the arterial lining of the body becomes loaded with plaque. It narrows the blood flow, so therefore the heart has to work harder. Uh, it affects the immune system, uh, the lungs, and it has a real problem recovering and trying to rebuild itself. Stomach cramps, reflux, and nausea. So we call the, uh, the gut-brain connection. So a lot of times when we're under stress, our gut will act up. But if it's long-term, then we, we obviously have a problem. Uh, hormones affects the loss of libido, uh, for men, uh, lower sperm production and increased uh, period pain for women. Interesting, last week in my West Hartford office, I had a young lady, 33 years old. She came to me because her, uh, her and her husband wanted to get pregnant. And um, uh, what we call her in the program, she said to me, she said, tell me what you did or gave me to make my periods not hurt. And, and flow easy. And she said, the last two months I've been in the program, the periods came, they went, I hardly even knew it. She said, tell me what you gave me so I can stay on that. And I had to explain to her, I didn't give you anything in particular. What I gave you was everything to get rid of the inflammation. And she said, well, my doctor told me when I started menstruating at 15, 16, and my periods were so bad, I'd be cramped and, you know, laying in the fetal position. That that's just the way it was. That's the way my body functioned. And that is so untrue. She obviously was born with way too much inflammation. And as the years went on, just increased that. Now, all of a sudden, in two months, we get rid of the inflammation, periods are fine. So that's how quickly the body can respond in all of these areas if, if we do the right thing. And it can't be the right thing for a day. It can't be the right thing for a week. It's got to be the right thing from this moment on if we want to get rid of that. Aches and pains in the joints and muscles, we call it arthritis, autoimmune inflammation, and uh, low bone density because the bones can't recover. Okay. Um, so the thing is here, it kind of re repeats a lot of what I what I said. But what happens is when you see oxidative damage, okay, that means you are becoming, that's why we put people on antioxidants to, to restore the oxidative damage that's been caused, okay? Because that's rebuilding the immune system. We disrupt our cell metabolism. Our cells are little 
hundreds of thousands of little guys in our body that are taking care of us. Everything is supposed to be working, but when we get become unhealthy, those cells become damaged. And what happens is if the body is not healthy enough to remove the cells from the body, then we end up with other problems. Um, it's decreased uh, blood, uh, brain. Um, we get headaches all the time. We, we feel uh, lightheaded. We just feel tired all the time. Similar to when you have um, a head cold. If you've ever had a head cold and your sinuses are blocked, what happens is you just feel tired because of the blood flow and it's hard to think because of the blood flow in the brain. Now that's normally temporary, but we get the, the, um, the issue because there's inflammation and we have to increase things that, to put in the body to get rid of it quickly. Uh, melatonin reduction, meaning we can't relax. We're always uptight, we're, we're angry, we're frustrated. Uh, which obviously affects the brain and the glucose. And then generation of stress proteins, all of a sudden we start getting all these stress proteins going through our body and we're just a mess. We're, we're upset, we're barking at everybody, um, nothing is right, et cetera. So those are the, the um, things from environmental toxins and that type of thing that create this. Now. What we have to understand is we are never, ever, ever going to get away from all of these effects because you have to breathe. And unfortunately, the quality of air is not good. You have to drink water. The quality of a lot of our water, hopefully we're not drinking tap water, but even bottled water or whatever has, has toxins and breaks down the immune system, which does create inflammation. So what we have to understand, we're never going to get away from all of it, but we have to work hard in order to protect ourselves when we do get the inflammation in our body, that our body can take care of it. All right. That's the key point. Okay. Uh, biotoxins, um, which basically, as it says, is hazardous organic substances, um, and they cause damage to the body. So, they're produced by living organisms and biotoxins, and then illness happens as it affects the body adversely, leading to chronic symptoms. So biotoxins is mold and yeast. Anybody who lives in a moldy house or works in a place that's moldy, goes to school in an old building that's moldy, is going to end up with chronic infections. Um, Lyme disease. Lyme disease is not because a tick bit you, okay? I want everybody to understand that. If you're healthy, there is no tick that is going to give you a disease for the rest of your life. Because what happens is you, you took in more toxins than the body could handle and it broke down the system. It was a straw that broke the camel's back. Viral infections and bacterial. So we're going to absorb those in our body through many things. But these are biotoxins. Not all of them are we going to be able to, st to stay away from, just like we talked earlier. But if you're around a place that's moldy or there's um, that type of thing, you have to get away from it. You have to clean it out. Stay away because in time it will get you, especially if you're not taking care of yourself. All right. So, um, and most of these and this, I know it says for some, okay, can cause debilitating disease and conditions, which involves candida, fibromyalgia, arthritis, lupus, MS, those kind of things. Okay, so deficiencies, vitamin D deficiency. If I could tell everybody to take one thing every day, if somebody says, I'm only going to take one thing. That's it. I would tell you vitamin D. All right. Because vitamin D is so powerful. Now, please don't mistake that and say I'm saying that all you need to take is vitamin D. That's not that's not what I'm saying. But if somebody said there's only one thing I'm going to do, it would be vitamin D. Uh, because vitamin D can can create 
or lack of vitamin D can create pain uh, sensitivity. Moods, because it's a brain, I can uh, cause depression, um, sleeplessness, uh, muscle weakness, high blood pressure, um, get tired too quickly, uh, stress fractures, frequent illnesses, and um, brain because it's a learning, um, uh, the, it helps the brain to learn, okay? Now, again, vitamin D should be taken. Um, we tell people to take about five to 6,000 micrograms a day. But I will tell you that if you're eating bad, you're in a toxic environment, you're overloaded with stress. Um, what did I say? Oh, I'm sorry, international units. Thank you. Um, we have our fact checker. <laughs> um, no fake news. Yeah. If you're eating bad and you're under stress, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, vitamin D by itself is not going to fix your problem. Can it slow the progression down to a degree? It can, but it's not going to fix everything. So that is why vitamin D is so important. Okay. Um, okay. B vitamins. We need B vitamins for um, people that do certain things. Um, if you smoke, if you use antacids, if you're under high stress, uh, that's why sometimes when I test, I didn't see that. Uh, when you're under stress, the, um, I don't, um, when we're under high stress and everything, our, we put people on B16 because that's a stress hormone, um, uh, stress vitamin, I should say. I, and exposure to environmental toxins, um, genetic disorders, uh, birth control, women who take birth control pills, um, high performance athletes. I don't know if any of you, Greg, you're probably falling in that category. Um, poor diet and sugar, heavy alcohol use, antidepressants, but um, things like um, Tylenol, ibuprofen, et cetera. I talk to a lot of the guys I play golf with. They go, I have to take Tylenol before I play golf because my knees hurt and my back hurts and all this stuff. And I try to explain to them, but when you're on the golf course, they don't want to listen, okay? Because as soon as they're done playing golf, they want to go and have a beer. <laughs> and so one thing leads to another. And then they eat the fast foods, the hot dogs and stuff like that. So for me to try to explain to them, and they're always asking me, how come you don't do this? Come on in. Why don't you do it? And I tell them because my health. I just <laughs> believe that I need to take care of myself and not do all those kind of things. What happens if you have vitamin D deficiencies? All the things listed, fatigue, headaches, poor memory, chronic pain. Some of these sound very familiar with what we talked about, vitamin D. Um, hormonal imbalances, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, uh, poor detoxification system, adrenal fatigue, numbness, high blood pressure, migraines, et cetera. Those are the signs. But it's also a sign, all those things are a sign of poor eating uh, and all that stuff. Okay, omega-3s, which is um, the evening primrose uh, and, and your um, salmon oil and your um, flax seed. <laughs> so you don't need to take salmon and flax, but one or the other. But again, they're called essential fatty acids. Um, they, they help with um, oxidative stress. Um, they, they lubricate the body. They uh, feed the cells. So they, they get a healthy um, cell structures and functions. So the cells stay healthier and the cells is the core of our immune system. Zinc. Now during COVID, zinc was flying off the shelf. Once COVID has passed, people quit doing a lot of things. Remember, there's still viruses out there. So we don't wanna get complacent and think, okay, that passed. Now I'm, I'm safe. There isn't. Now you've heard of things like monkey pox and all kinds of stuff, okay? But there's many different variants that are coming down. But zinc is very important. Um, you can look and read. I won't go read each of them because some of them are um, the same as um, the other stuff, okay? 
Uh, so, but it zinc actually decreases inflammation. Okay, it does suppress the abnormal tissue growth, and it helps the, the immune system. Uh, supports progesterone production, which you need progesterone to balance your estrogen and, and testosterone. Uh, reduces risk and development of, of any cancers, um, and supports your genes, um, which actually helps with uh, supporting and protecting you from breast and prostate cancer. So those are, and it helps you lose weight as well, okay? So those are the benefits of zinc. Okay, natural support. Um, what happens is people tell me, well, I feel pretty good, so I don't need to do anything. When we feel good, that's when we should be doing everything to prevent inflammation, okay? To prevent the slowing of, of the progress of inflammation, which is going to happen. And working on reversing anything that's negative in our body. Unfortunately, most people use the health world just like we do the conventional medicine. When I feel bad, I go to the doctor. If I don't feel bad, I'm, I'm okay. And that is not true. If we, are, if we know and we do know if we're eating right, if we're getting enough exercise, if we're controlling our stress, if we're sleeping enough, et cetera, we know that. And when we're not, that's when we need to take action, not waiting until those issues create a problem. And then all of a sudden you're sick. All of a sudden you get diagnosed with something and then you go, Oh my gosh, I didn't know. Taking care of our health is the same thing as taking care of everything in your life, your home, your relationships, your spiritual health, um, everything, your work, your job. It's an everyday thing that you have to be cognizant of taking care of it. Unfortunately, and medicine thrives on this because people get sick. And then all of a sudden, they need all kinds of medications, they need all kinds of surgeries, they need all kinds of everything, and then you're never going to get off of them. So we have to think about the natural ways of taking care of ourselves so that we can be healthy. All right. Top anti-inflammatory foods. These are the things you should be eating. Grass, pasture-fed meats, poultry, and wild game. Lemons, limes, and berries. And I would add to that kiwi. Avocados and avocado oil. Green tea, plain green tea. Non-starchy vegetables. Uh, turmeric. But many people think if I just take turmeric, I'm fine. Uh, that's not true, okay? There's nothing, you could eat all the wild caught salmon that you could possibly eat and still be unhealthy if you do all the other things wrong, okay? Bone broth and vegetable broth, apple cider vinegar, ginger, uh, extra virgin olive oil and olives, although that's one thing I will not put in my body, but <laughs> nonetheless, fermented vegetables, unless, unless you have an autoimmune deficiency, you do not want ferment, fermentation in your body because it will actually feed the problem. But once you get rid of that, it is wonderful. Coconut oil, but it's got to be unprocessed, unrefined coconut oil, not the refined. They'll sell them side by side. One says refined. The other one says unrefined. You want the unrefined. Um, basil, oregano, thyme, rosemary, sage. There's a song. Okay. Garlic, onions, and chives. Those are um, the foods we should be eating. We need to stay away from the bottom line. Refined grains, whole grains. Uh, we need to stay away from deep fried foods, the processed foods, the packaged foods. If it comes in a box, a can, we should not be eating it. Grain-fed meats, uh, eggs, farm-raised eggs. Uh, I mean, we want farm-raised eggs, okay? Uh, fast foods and sodas. Um, we want to stay away from commercial salad dressings. Back in my day when I was sick, I used to eat salad dressing 
Thousand Island, and I would drown my salads in it. And I thought I was being healthy because I was eating salads. Uh, we have to say we have trans fat, margarine, sesame oils, corn, all that stuff. Those are your top inflammatory foods. If you have those in your cupboards, if you have them on your shelves, you need to get rid of them. You don't need to say, well, I paid for them. I need to use them because that's saying I bought poison and I'm going to use it because I spent money on it. It's your help. Okay. Reduce stress and improve sleep quality to help get rid of inflammation. Okay. Cool room. Um, keep your room dark, dark, dark. If you have to, use a sleep mask to keep the light away. Um, avoid caffeine, especially within eight hours of sleeping. Um, don't eat within three hours of sleeping, even if it's healthy. Um, try to get sun exposure during the day. In the evening, especially in the summertime, as the sun's going down, sit out as the sun is setting. Let it shine in your face. Keep your eyes open if you can. Just let it for a few minutes. That will actually relax you. It's a great way to get vitamin D. Exercise, but not at night, okay? People get off work, they go hit the gym, work out real hard, and then they wonder why they're having trouble sleeping. Um, avoid bright light after sunset. Why? The body is in tune to sunset. We are products of the world, and our body knows when it's time to shut your eyes. That is why people that work night shift struggle with health, always. And then wine, start winding down before bed. Um, do some light reading. Uh, try to turn off the TV for the lights. Don't go to sleep with the TV on, um, unless it's on a timer. But a lot of people, lady was in today, said she sleeps with the TV on. You will not go into a deep sleep because the light changes all the time, the sound, et cetera. So you need to work on getting a good night's sleep to reduce stress and obviously inflammation. Move, get some exercise. Why? Circulation, lymph lymphatic drainage, um, oxygenation of cells, brain neurotransmitters. If you work out and you get some movement, you'll feel better mentally. Reducing stress improves the mood, enhances mental clarity. Okay, now, there is a difference between movement and exercise. Oftentimes, um, people tell me, in my job, I, work, I, I move around. That is not exercise, that's movement, which is fine, but don't classify that as exercise. It's better to have a, a job where you move and you're not sedentary, but it's still not going to burn the calories that you want because your body gets used to that activity and that becomes the norm. So we still need some extra movement, which is called exercise. Okay, limit EMF exposure, all right? Um, natural EMF comes from um, the earth, okay, sunlight. We oftentimes when I do the Zyno scans, it shows me uh, electromagnetic fields are stressing you. That's because we're like the gentleman in the next picture. TV's on, we've got our headphone, we've got our phone in our hand, we got uh, other devices sitting there, and there's so much. And then at work, that's what a lot of us do. We work on computers, all right, which is EMF. And that can be very detrimental, become very toxic to the body. You need a break from it. You need to put your, your phone away from your bed. People keep it right next to their bed. No hmm? Okay. That's what they're not. So oh. That's what they're saying. <laughs> that is coaching me. Uh, the other detox is a total body cleanse, which a lot, when we do the, the uh, scan, it tells me which one of the two is better for you. So either one that you do is um, um, works, um, but it's good if we know which one is a better one for you. The regular one is a deeper cleanse, a little bit longer because you're taking the supplements beyond, but sometimes the body wants a quick fix um, and it doesn't need that way deep in depth cleanse. 
Okay, we put this on here because when we test for our, our Zytoscan, what happens is if there is, as you, as you notice here, if you look at the different areas, you'll see that the inflammation on this person is very stressed. That means they have a lot of inflammation. And then when I go to the inflammation part, it'll actually tell me which organs are where the inflammation or what parts of the body the inflammation is actually living in. Sometimes we do scans and in the inflammation, I'm just targeting inflammation this time, um, it'll, it'll show uh, zero. In this one, zero inflammation, okay? Now you might say, oh, that's great. No, it is not great. Because ideally all these lines should end right where that dark line is. That's ideal. That means inflammations actually overwhelm the body and the body is, is struggling to overcome the inflammation. And part of it on this person is due to lack of hydration. They're not drinking enough water and you'll notice diet and nutrition is way up. So they're eating bad. They're not getting enough um, water and it's creating inflammation. And in the top part, you can see it's affecting their hormones. So they're having a hormone issue and their immune system is crashing, but it's because of inflammation. So that's the value of the Zytoscan and how it helps us to determine what's going on. Um, so we talked about natural support, things that we use to balance blood sugar is Slenderate, try to keep the body calm is tranquility. We talked about the evening primrose and the salmon oil for your essential fatty acids, the vitamin D for the brain and uh, neurological help, relief to get rid of inflammation in the joints, probiotic helps to get rid of inflammation in the intestinal tract, and sleep helps the melatonin to people to be relaxed and calm. So what happens is, and the reason I like to do this and we do it remote as well, it takes all the guesswork out. Somebody who says, you know, this is bothering me, that's happening, et cetera. That's what we use. Okay, so um, as Patty mentioned, I used up my time, but think about inflammation as the evil. We don't want it growing and living in our body. We have to work on it every single day. There should not be a day that goes by. Um, Taryn was in East Hampton doing a foot bath, I think, while we were doing the class. And sometimes we see a huge amount of inflammation that comes out through the foot baths, okay? Do everything you can to get rid of inflammation in your body because that is a life, life change, okay? So remember, whatever you are not changing, you are choosing. So if you do not change the way you live, then you are choosing to be either carry a lot of inflammation, to be ill, to be overweight, to hurt, uh, et cetera, to be overly stressed, et cetera. So whatever you are not changing, you are choosing. So the gentleman that I had in there today, when he said, you know, I don't know, I just don't seem to be able to change, then he's choosing the pastries over his health. And that's okay if that's what you want, if you want to, if you want to feel that way, you want to be overweight, you want to hurt, you want um, diabetes, okay, I'm not going to argue that. But if you choose it, you got to live with it. If you want to change it, you can. I want to thank you all for being part of it. We're going to go back. I'll open up to questions if anybody has any questions and um, see if there's any feedback. Okay, who has a question? Taryn, how was your foot? Hello. Rest? Hello. I'm getting ready to go into the game, but I wanted to say thank you because that was really good information. You're welcome. Thank you. Karen. I hope your team wins tonight. During the game. Oh, I know. The last two games were horrid, so I'm hoping. <laughs> okay. What team is that? Thunderbirds, Springfield. Oh. Thunderbirds hockey. Uh, Calder Cup finals. So, Darren, how was your foot bath? It was good. I got some 
liver and joints and uh, and not too much else actually. Okay, Mostly well, those two. Mm -hmm. Deep toxin, so that's on the third day of liquid, I think she told me. Oh, hey, you're right. Yes. Yeah. Yep, she's on the third day of liquid. Yep. Okay, what is a question for me? Well, the vitamin D comes in 2,000 IUs, so you should take three 2,000 to make 6,000 daily. That's correct. Minimum. Minimum. And you can't overtake vitamin D. If you take more, people that um, have onset of Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, it's recommended 10, 20,000 IUs. Uh, on a daily basis. Nancy, how are you? <laughs> okay. Who else has a question? Yes, Greg. John, when you were talking about the B vitamin, did you say B16? Yes. Oh, really? Okay. B16. They make B16 specifically for stress. Okay, so it's a B16 is very much for the stress um, complex. Okay. A lot of times in the uh, Zyto scans, it'll show up uh, B16 as a necessary supplement for that particular person. I've I've heard of B6, but I haven't heard of B, B16. Yep. So um, looks like that. They call it 16B, but. It, oh, yeah. okay, good. Yeah. I, I, I've heard of the others as well, and that was the first time I heard that, so I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss here. So, right now, the daily vitamin um, that a lot of people take has a lot of the Bs in it, so it it has your your B um, one, two, three, six, uh, twelve, and stuff like that, but it's in a smaller amount. So the B16, oftentimes people just need it because they're under stress, et cetera. So the B16 can actually help them get through that and help the body. Oh, it's not an issue for me if I'm already taking the B, the daily uh, to add the B16 to, to that supplement. No, it's not a problem because like I said earlier, you can't overdo the B vitamins because the body will just slough it off. It's, it's not something that you're going to get too much of. Um, so no, but the best thing I would do is do a scan and just see if it calls for it. If it doesn't call for it, I wouldn't worry about it. You're doing something right. I mean, I know Heather keeps you nice and calm and all that. So, you know, <laughs> no stress there. <laughs> so, so John, can you hold the B16 bottle up to the camera again? It's from systemic formulas. Oh, it's a systemic. Okay, got it. Thanks. Yeah. You're welcome, Ben. Hey, who else has a question? So, John, how much vitamin D are you recommending people to take, or can't you tell without a Zyto scan? Well, I would recommend a minimum of uh, 6,000. Um, I use international units a day. Now, if a person has a chronic issue, I would recommend more. But for the average person, I would recommend 6,000 international units. I personally, I personally take 12,000, but that's me. Wow. <laughs> Do you adjust that IU count? like when you're outside more in the summertime versus indoors more in the winter? I don't. I don't. I mean, you know, here's the thing that people think because they live, when I had this a place like this in Arizona, people said, I don't need vitamin D because, you know, down here, we're out in the sun all the time. You don't get, when you get vitamin D from the sun, it's when the sun is rising and the sun is setting. You don't get vitamin D in hot, scorching sun, sunshine, okay? That is not when you get it. You get it. That's why it's good to sit out in the sun as the sun rises, let it hit you in the face, or when it's setting at the end of the day. That is, that's when you get your vitamin D. And it's really good to keep your eyes open 
during that session while you were sitting there? Do you have a cure for blindness after we've been staring at the sun? <laughs> well, if you stare at the right time of day, you won't have any problem with blindness. <laughs> so, who else has a question? Nobody? Okay. All right. So, what I... Oh, um, there's a question came uh, and it didn't show information. My skin has been breaking out terribly with blotch of skin disorders and I itch. You're right, I cannot lose. And we spoke about it. Okay, somebody was mentioning about when they had the last test and they have itchy skin. That also can be other things too, okay? Um, so when skin breakouts is not always just because of inflammation, it can be other things as well. And we would have to dig deeper into that, what it might be. Understand that stress, stress can cause many of these things, okay? And because you may have other things um, impeding your health, then inflammation is lower because other things are higher. Everything needs to be in balance. So when you have one test and doesn't show, it might show up the next time, it may or may not. Sometimes you have a high inflammation, the next test, if you do the right things, it goes down. So uh, we're always working on our health every single day. Okay, Judy, I'll mention that. What would you say is the number one thing causing a problem with inflammation or also to you, the inflammation of pain? Okay, the question is, what would I say the number one thing causing a problem with inflammation? The way we eat, our lifestyle, stress, those are the things that cause it, okay? How do you get rid of it? Um, you have to reduce your stress. And, and I'm gonna address one thing real quick here. When people tell me I'm under stress all the time and I have no choice. Yes, you do. You do have a choice. You're staying in that situation that's very stressful. And you have to either say to yourself, I can live with it and I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna let it bother me or you have to get away from that situation. It's one or the other. If you say I'm under stress all the time and you keep doing the same exact thing, you're always gonna be under stress. So we have to change our way of thinking or change the situation, one or the other. Uh, I see Judy has a, has a hand up. I don't know if that was for the question or not. Yes, and also about vitamin D. Mm -hmm. uh, if I had a level of 105, is that too high? For vitamin D? Yeah, when I had my blood tested? No. Why? Okay. No, I just didn't know. It wasn't in the range. Okay. <laughs> I don't think. Okay. I would not worry about the range at all. Anybody else? Okay, for being on the, on the class. What? 